as a retro gamer who loves collecting video games, I've got games from the 1990s, the 1980s, and even the 1970s. In fact, I've got a Magnavox Odyssey, which was the first ever video game console to be released, which came out way back in 1972. But what may surprise you is that the Odyssey wasn't the birth of video games. They'd been around before that, and in fact, quite a bit before that. And as a retro gamer who has a huge interest in the history of video games, the question of which game came first, which game started it all, is something that I just have to find out. And that's what I plan to do in this video. So welcome to episode two of the Intrigatorium. And in this video, I'll be taking a look at the very first ever video game from way back in 1947. In 1947, the world was recovering from the Second World War while celebrating the defeat of Hitler and his friends. The factories that produced tanks and weapons were now being reconverted to produce civilian goods once more. The US population was more than happy to get things back on track and get out to the shops and gleefully buy all sorts of appliances to fill their homes with. With an all-time record low rate of unemployment, this era of post-war prosperity became known as the post-World War II economic expansion, or even the golden age of capitalism. Which must mean that now we're in like the poop age of capitalism or something? Makes sense. During this time, there was a surge in demand for new homes as the GI Bill and loans from the Federal Housing Administration gave returning soldiers the ability to buy a house. Homes weren't the only big purchase that Americans were making during this time of prosperity. The sale of cars went through the roof too, so much so that by the end of the 1950s, three quarters of all American households had at least one set of wheels. With peace and prosperity also comes pleasure. Businesses were able to focus on making items that provide entertainment once again. With the resumption of the TV broadcasts that were mostly taken off air during the war, the television soon became the must-have item during this post-war boom period. In 1950, only around 9% of American households owned a TV. This figure skyrocketed to a whopping 87.1% by 1960. Before the war, only around 7,000 TV sets were sold in the USA in total. And by 1947, there were approximately 44,000 sets in use. During this era, two physicists called Thomas T. Goldsmith Jr. and Essel Ray Mann were working at the television manufacturer Dumont Laboratories in New Jersey. Here, the duo was working on developing cathode ray tubes for use in television sets. During the war, Goldsmith had worked on radar displays which utilised CRTs. It was this same equipment which inspired the two scientists to create something similar that could be used for entertainment. And thus, the cathode ray tube amusement device was born. This device was essentially just an oscilloscope-like CRT with a few knobs and switches. These said knobs and switches would be used to control the trajectory of a dot as it moves across the screen. This dot would represent an artillery shell and you would aim it at your targets. The device was unable to show the targets on screen, so, much like the Magnavox Odyssey, overlays would be applied to the screen to show enemy tanks, planes and ships and what have you. You would adjust the trajectory of the dot to try and hit the targets, and adjust the point at which this dot enlarges and blurs to indicate an explosion. The goal would be to get this explosion on one of the targets, this would work like an extremely rudimentary version of games like Scorched Earth or Worms, where you'd adjust your trajectory with your bazooka to try and hit your foes. Unfortunately, no images of this device nor any gameplay footage exist, so I can't show you what this would have been like on original hardware. But luckily, the website Retro Game Deconstruction Zone has a reconstruction that you can play in a web browser. 
There's a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself too. Much like the Magnavox Odyssey, this device has no way of keeping score, so that's something that the players would have had to have done themselves. This device doesn't actually have any computing power at all, therefore it may not meet all the criteria to be considered a video game in the opinions of some. I however do consider it to be a video game, but not a computer game. You may be wondering why didn't gaming take off in the 1940s and become this huge thing? Well, there's quite a simple answer to that, and that is that this device was never actually released. In fact, only a few hand-built prototypes were ever known to have been made. And sadly, those ones have seemingly been lost in the mists of time. But how amazing would it be if one of those just turned up one day? You know, someone's just cleaning out an old garage or an attic or some storage unit. You know, they've had an old relative who used to work at Dumont Laboratories and they're just going through all this stuff, seeing if anything in there is worth selling and they come across one of these units. How amazing would that be to finally have the very first ever video game actually preserved? That'd be amazing. Unfortunately, I doubt that's ever gonna happen, but I can dream, right? A patent was filed for this invention in 1947 and granted in 1948, but neither of the inventors, nor DeMont Laboratories, decided to pursue this product further. The exact reason for abandoning the development of this product is unknown, however, DeMont's financial problems at the time could have been to blame. This device was pretty much forgotten about for around 20 years, until in 1969, when it was cited by Ralph Bayer et al for their patent, Television Gaming Apparatus and Method, which would lead to the creation of the Magnavox Odyssey. The cathode ray tube amusement device was also cited by a few other patents between 1969 and 1976, including this one by Magnavox titled Television Combat Game, which seems rather similar in idea to the cathode ray tube amusement device. The device was then completely forgotten about again until the patent was rediscovered in 2002 by the French writer and electronics enthusiast David Winter. Winter was conducting some research into the Magnavox Odyssey when he came across this patent in a box of paperwork that Magnavox had put together for a lawsuit back in 1974. And with its rediscovery, the story of this device hit the internet so it could be remembered for as long as human civilization continues. Which, seeing how things are going, maybe another few months? Year tops? So thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to share, comment, like, subscribe and all that if you did. And remember to smash the crap out of that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a video. I'd like to give a humongous, mega, ultimate, awesome power thank you to my incredible Patreon supporters, including Branwyn Sheep, Daniel Martins, Mr. Wolfwood, Magnus Worsay, Eddie, House of the Ted, and Stuart Christopher Brownlee and Adam Phillips who joined whilst I was editing this episode you lot are amazing thank you so much if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content about the really early days of video games then you could check out my video that I did on Pong for the Game Boy Color or if you want another Intrigatorium video then why not check out episode 1 where I Look at the arcade game that's about Megadeth and dinosaurs. So, with all that out of the way, all I can say is, until next time, bye!